with the state of the world right now, it's more critical than ever. <laughs> No, it's just a, this is a greenhouse video. We're just talking about the greenhouse. It's working out really great, and I want to share some things with you. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In this video, I wanted to share with you something that is working exceptionally well, phenomenally well here at our homestead, and that is this entry greenhouse that we created. On our house, we have two greenhouses, one on the east side, over there, one on the west side, which is the one that I'm in right now. Uh, the west side one is the first one that we've really kind of started turning into a greenhouse. The one on the east side is still just like a bunch of construction thing, table saws, you know, all my nails and screws and scrap lumber and stuff like that. And that'll, that's gonna stay kind of an ugly uh, eyesore for a while. But this one, this is more the entryway to the house. We started uh, making this one be more beautiful and it's working really well on a number of levels. It's an attractive space, as you can see here, you know, the grass in this area here, we're trying to get this to kind of start growing in. It's a little bit greener over on this side than it is over on that side, but that's uh, slowly starting to come in. You can see a lot of the other uh, greenery uh, is happening around there. But in addition to just the visual aesthetic of, you know, you walk into someone's house and it's a beautiful tropical rainforest upon entering, uh, in addition to that, it provides us a lot of services here. One of them is that we've got a garden right around the whole periphery here uh, where we're starting to grow food. We've got a citrus tree here, a lot of tomatoes. We had beans growing back there. Uh, we've got some pumpkins growing over on the other side right now. We're trying all sorts of different things. Snow peas are something that we're going to try to see if we can kind of grow that through the winter a little bit. Kale is something you could definitely grow all winter that we haven't tried it yet, but in theory that should work out really well. So uh, there are lots of uh, food benefits of having uh, this here. It also keeps the house a little bit warmer because as we enter uh, our house, instead of going directly into the house from the cold outdoors, we're opening the door into the greenhouse. Some of that cold gets into the greenhouse, but then when we get into the house, the house isn't uh, going to be getting nearly as much of that kind of uh, frigid air dump. Also, even when nobody's going in and out of the house, this is the wall of the house right over here, and this is... Uh, at the moment, instead of being cold like it is outside, although you know it's mid-December, but it's like only in like the mid-50s outside, which is phenomenally warm. It feels like summer out there, but uh, you know it's still it's a heck of a lot warmer in here, so we're not losing as much heat through this wall. There are a lot of great uh, aspects of having a entry uh, kind of greenhouse into your house. Uh, not to mention if you are in a situation where there's like wildfire smoke and you want to keep more of that wildfire smoke out of your house, having a buffer is good for that. God forbid there was ever kind of like a radiological emergency, having a buffer can be helpful for that. Lots of benefits to having a greenhouse, not the least of which, again, is it's kind of attractive. I want to bring you around some of the features that we have in here. I've got a, a little camera in my hand that I'm going to use for getting some close-ups and details of things. Uh, I'm going to start from where, uh, well, what is kind of creating all the green in this, and that is gray water. We get gray water from our upstairs bathroom. And this is the pipe where that uh, gray water is coming from. It comes out of this pipe right here, being collected from the bathroom just up above, runs along here, over to here, and then dumps into a pot over on this side. Now inside the pot, we've got a bunch of uh, charcoal. There's a bunch of uh, charcoal in there. Kind of get some of the soap chemicals out of there. We use very natural soaps here, but uh, you know, still it's good to have uh, uh, you know some kind of filtering going on there. At least even just physical filtering uh, because you know hair goes through the drain and everything. And uh, that, that's our first stage filter. From there, it bubbles out of the bottom uh, through a little hole in the bottom of the pot here and goes into these little delta areas. Now, I've been adding dirt uh, here and here, actually even earlier today, uh, from this bucket here. What I'm trying to do is just slowly bring up the level of the dirt here, uh, but maintain a steady flow. Uh, what happens is the water starts over on this side, and some of it flows down in that direction, and the rest of it flows off in this direction. And uh, the reason I'm bringing it up is I want to try to get it so the water can really get around to all the different areas. So we're watering things here, we're watering things there, and uh, if it really pools in one area, you'll get a lot of water in one spot, but then things at the end of the run are going to be a little dry, like the, the citrus tree uh, right next to me. One of the great things about having the greenhouse is uh, the smells, the smells of spring. The citrus tree, 
smells like citrus, especially if you kind of break one of these leaves, just gives that wonderful summery kind of citrus smell. If you've ever grown tomatoes and you're working in your tomato patch, just touching the tomato plants, you get that, oh, there it is, there it is, that wonderful smell of summer that uh, you know many of us associate with tomatoes. Uh, and this is all being generated from gray water that comes from our bathroom. I don't have to come out here and water any of this stuff. It just happens completely on its own. And we're taking this resource, uh, water, and we're getting two uses out of it. We can wash or you know, take a shower with it, and it is watering all of our plants. Additionally, uh, there is nutrients, so like you know, shedded skin comes off of us, so instead of that shedded skin being wasted, it gets used out here. We use uh, biodegradable natural soaps, so those biodegradable and natural soaps actually become nutrients for the soil out here. And there's another uh, critical uh, asset that comes out of the gray water system, and that is the, the warmth of the water itself. We're pumping a lot of uh, energy into the water to get it warm, and instead of just throwing that water down the drain, then it goes out to like our septic system and leach field, instead of just doing that, we're taking that heat energy and we're introducing it into the greenhouse, and it is a substantial factor in warming the greenhouse, having all those BTUs of heat put into the water and retained in the greenhouse instead of just being dumped out somewhere. A lot of that gets uh, held onto in the soil here, and we've got rocks. Uh, lining it all along the edge. We've got uh, a nice rock wall that goes all the way around the edge here. This is some of the newest soil that we just put in recently over here. I'm still working on getting water down to this area. This is still kind of on the dry side because we're not getting uh, the water to go all the way and that's one of the reasons that I'm starting to add that sand up there is so we can just raise the level of water and have it spread through more of the soil here. Another aspect of the greenhouse that's really working well is it's another way of retaining uh, warm air that blows out of the bathrooms when you're over your running event, when you have a shower or something like that. We're uh, exhausting that warm, humid air out into this space and that uh, comes down these uh, uh, silver uh, tubes. Uh, one exits the lower bathroom and the other exits from the upper bathroom. That blows the air down into the ground. We've got a couple of tubes to receive that and they go into some tubes that go underground and then they emerge several feet away. Here's where one of them emerges right here and the other one is back in this corner over here. We've got a little lid on it so things aren't, uh, aren't falling down uh, into the tube. We work to warm up uh, air for the house, and in this way we are saving that heat instead of just dumping that heat out. Now arguably there's not that much energy that goes into the, the heating of the air that we lose out here. It's a very small amount, but it's something. Uh, we, there's a lot more heat energy that goes into the water that gets out here, but having that uh, heat energy from the air is just it's another way of uh, you know, keeping a resource and using it a second time. So if you're ever in a situation where you think that you could add a greenhouse to the side of one of your homes, uh, whether it is on the south face, which makes a lot of sense here in the northern hemisphere, or on the east face or the west face, this again is our west facing greenhouse and it still gets an awful lot of warmth in here. I think it's a great, uh, it's a great asset for creating food, for being able to utilize uh, wastewater, if you can get water uh, you know, as gray water uh, flowing into that greenhouse. It's a great buffer for you know, cold air or soot from like wildfire smoke or again, God forbid, you know, a radiological emergency, having that kind of buffer can be really helpful. But it, at the end of the day, the thing that I really appreciate the most about it is the aesthetic. In the middle of winter, I can come out here and there is stonework, like I mentioned, all around the edge. I can sit down on the stones out here. I can you know, have bare feet and stand on the stones in this area. And it feels like a little bit, maybe not necessarily of summer in the middle of winter, but it certainly feels like a little bit of, of autumn or spring in the middle of winter. And psychologically, I think that makes a huge difference. And in, in, in addition to that, just the amount of light that's out here, it feels like an outdoor environment because you know you have air moving around, you can smell the plants, it's a little bit more humid out here. We actually have a fan, there's a fan right up here that we have on a timer. And uh, this fan is uh, something that we use to agitate the air in here. Uh, if you have a, a greenhouse, if you don't have the air uh, kind of moving around periodically, you have mold issues and things like that. Uh, also, the plants are gonna be a little stronger if you have some, some breeze uh, blowing them around now and then. 
And um, it just, it's a great psychological kind of impact, having a space like this. The last thing I wanted to show you is just uh, the, I don't, I don't know if you, if you wouldn't call it lattice work, but uh, the structure that we have on the back wall here, it looks like a ladder. This is a, a pretty cool way of uh, you know, attaching uh, things like plants to the back wall. What I've uh, done here is I just have some, uh, uh, these are one by four inch rough sawn boards, and we create these little uh, brackets for holding the plants on. And I just, this is just out of some scrap wire where it hooks around the back side and then has like a little loop, hooks around the back side again. And I just make these uh, for wherever we want to uh, connect up the plants. And it's a really easy way of uh, creating, uh, you know, kind of climbing structures for plants that aren't necessarily gonna vine. Now, uh, pole beans vine up this just fine, but things like tomatoes, you need little structures like that. And uh, also it just, it's, I think it's pretty attractive having that, uh, that surface back there. So that's it. This worked out really great for me. It didn't have to cost that much. It's just the cost of the, you know, the lumber materials to build up the sides of it. We spent a little bit of money on the roof, roof material uh, in here. There are polycarbonate sheets and these are 11 chambered polycarbonate sheets. So we're not getting a lot of uh, condensation on the underside of it because you have all those kind of uh, little cavities, which acts as insulation to try to make it so that uh, you're not losing, uh, you know, as much heat as you otherwise would through, through the roof surface. Uh, so we spent a little bit of money on that, but you know, I've just in the amount of, of heating saved in, in oh gosh, even the first year, perhaps, uh, you know, these things might've even paid for themselves just after the first couple of years, just in the amount of heat that we save by having this kind of, uh, this kind of greenhouse structure. So that's it. I'm always trying to encourage people to just try things, do new things, and even if for no other reason other than the aesthetic and the psychological benefit of in the middle of deep winter, to be able to walk out in an environment like this, have dirt, soil, the smell of tomato plants on your hands, I think it's a huge, uh, you know, benefit to people's lives. You know, yeah, you could take an, uh, a vacation to go to somewhere, you know, warm or tropical if that's the way that you want to do it, or you could take that vacation money, save it up, spend it on something like this and you get to enjoy that year after year. Granted, you know, it's not the same as being down in the Caribbean, but uh, one thing that ha this has over the Caribbean is that I can come out here every single day, all winter long. It's not like a one week kind of excursion and then it's always something you can keep and retain, pass on to your, your kids uh, because it's always gonna be an asset for you and your family. That's it, thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another one that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.